y'all. I hope y'all are having a good day. I know y'all probably just recently watched us make that homemade orange marmalade. So this is that Esther's orange marmalade cake I promised y'all. It comes out of a book called the Mitford series. It's by Jan Karen. And if you've never read that series, it's wonderful. And she actually put out a cookbook years later because when people would walk up asking her questions about her book readings or book signings, the first question would be, we want Esther's orange marmalade cake recipe. So <laughs> she's like, it's fictitious. So she ended up having to write and she got together with some chefs, some bakers, and they came up with Esther's orange marmalade cake recipe for us. Yay, and I made it for my good friend, Bridget. And y'all, tears came to her eyes because she said she'd been waiting for 20 years to taste this cake. So you know I'm going to share some with her this time. Um, the one thing I want to say is in the book, the cookbook, you've got a few variations with Esther's recipes. One uses oil. Then where I got the recipe from the second time was from the audio books, and it's called Esther's Gift, and it's actually read aloud to you, the recipe. And one uses oil, one uses butter. One has a little more flour than the other. One, let's see, it has a few little variations. Um, Oh, eggs. One has five eggs, one has three. So it's a little bit different like that. One's got baking powder, one's got baking soda. But you know what? I don't fault Esther because I do that very same thing with my baking and my cooking. I'm all the time changing just a little bit there on it. So no fault for Esther because I'm exactly the same way. So I made the first one out of the cookbook, okay? years ago and I'll link that video so you can watch it again you can tell I'm nervous <laughs> and on this one I'm gonna use the one that's read aloud and it's in the book called Esther's gift it's just a little short story it's real sweet so anyway that's the one we're gonna use today we're gonna start with two sticks of unsalted butter and I always save um, my, and it's softened, and when it's softened, it leaves a lot of butter behind, so that's perfect for buttering our cake pans. I have three 8-inch cake pans, okay? We're going to use that to butter them. I'm going to put my second stick in. These are 8 tablespoons apiece, so that would be 16 tablespoons of unsalted butter, or one cup, right? So yes, don't throw away your little wrappers. That would be perfect for that. I've got to find my beater, because I did not before I got on here with y'all. I'm terrible about that. I'll think I have everything, and then, lo and behold, I don't. Okay, guys, I'm going to clean this butter just a second. With that, I'm going to put in two cups of white granulated sugar. So let me get that in there. Now, that was a little skimpy on a cup. We want all two cups, don't we? We sure do. There we go. That's going to be perfect. All right, I'll just get this creaming. It needs to cream three, four minutes, okay, to get nice and fluffy for us. So in the meantime, I'm going to sift all our dry ingredients. That is going to start with some cake flour. And if you cannot find cake flour where you are, it is, what it is, is a little bit more of a tender flour. Um, it's been ground a little more, and it's, sometimes it has cornstarch in it. So it's less gluten in the flour, and it tends to make your cake a little more tender and soft. But look, if you've got everything to make this cake, did I tell y'all three cups? That's this recipe. <laughs> the one in the book calls for three and a quarter. But anyway, um, if you've got everything and you don't have the cake flour, use that all-purpose flour, okay? It's still going to be good. So don't let that stop you. All right. Got three cups there. Three cups there and probably three cups everywhere else. <laughs> That's part of baking in it. Okay, and the rest of our dry ingredients is one teaspoon, one half, excuse me, one half teaspoon of baking soda. And you know if you've got baking soda that there's going to be some buttermilk involved, right? Yes. And then one half teaspoon of salt going in there all right and we simply sift 
I say simply because my sifter is in the house and this wants to go everywhere. Here we go. Get back over there. In the recipe book, it calls for you to sift your dry ingredients two times. <laughs> But, and I did it the first time. Oh, yes, I did. I went straight by Esther's recipe. Now, if you read the series, you realize that Esther keeps this top secret. I've got y'all in my canning kitchen. That's why I said my sifter was in my kitchen kitchen. And I, before I start making a video, first the, the summer or the spring, I've got everything's migrated back into my kitchen. So, that was one thing that I had migrated back and... I tell you, I'll run back and forth a few times, and then I just say, forget about it. We're fixing to make this video. <laughs> All right, and the reason why you sift is because, sure enough, there's a few big grains in there, and we want our cake nice and tender, don't we? Okay, next, we are going to get our wet ingredients together. That is going to be one cup of buttermilk, and it needs to be room temp, Esther says, okay? So I got mine out and poured it before I started this video with y'all a little while. One tablespoon of orange zest, I'm going to put it in here, and that is roughly the amount of one orange, okay? And don't throw this orange away, we are going to use it in the rest of our cake video, yes we are, and then or our cake recipe. And then one and one half teaspoons of vanilla, the other recipe of Esther said two teaspoons. And I change my mind constantly like that too, do y'all? That's about three capfuls. One and a half to two, right? Okay, our butter has been fluffing over here. And it's a beautiful color. I want to show y'all what I'm talking about. Three or four minutes and it's going to look like this. Isn't that beautiful? I think so too. This whole cake is just sunshine. It's spring. Spring's right here, isn't it? So, I just, I love it. This cake is wonderful. It just makes me want to make it every year. Okay, three eggs in this recipe. So, I'm going to turn this back on. I'm going to add one egg at a time. And you let that get incorporated. And the reason why is if you dump all eggs at one time, sometimes they separate the butter so much, you it's hard to get it to go back together so we just let it take in one at a time and it's kind of our insurance just like that and now we are going to alternate our dry ingredients and our wet ingredients I'm going to put in some of the dry Put it on stir, maybe we won't make a mess. There we go. And a little bit of our buttermilk mixture. And I just keep doing this until it comes all together. Like that. Like that. always love to use this long, elongated cup measure because I can get it in here easier. Yes, I can. All right, guys, and the last of my buttermilk. I'm going to let that come together. Okay, y'all, I'm going to begin buttering my cake pans as well. And we are going to do like Esther. Yes, we are. We're going to put parchment paper in the bottom. And I cannot wait to tell y'all or show y'all what I found to order. Because I have cut parchment paper my whole entire life. And that's been many, many years. <laughs> and I found some pre-cut parchment paper, like 100 sheets on Amazon for little money and i'm gonna put that in the link so you can order it and i want to tell y'all if you do order it then supposedly i'm gonna be getting a little bit of a commission 
and I can keep on cooking with y'all. So if you do order it from what I put there from that link, I'll get a little bit. And it's no more cost to y'all. So that's even even better, isn't it? A win-win situation. Okay, y'all, I'm going to save my butter because, or my butter papers, because after I put that paper in there, I'm going to try to butter on this parchment a little bit too. Y'all see, this, this is 100 sheets of parchment paper and you get it to the size of your cake pans. I use eight inch cake pans because I like that inch being a little shorter than a nine inch. It seems like it stacks a little prettier to me, but that's just my silly preference. Okay. Look, it's perfect. You know how many years I have cut and cut and cut and cut and cut. <laughs> yes. So that's just perfect. Um, little pieces of parchment. I love it. So y'all go get y'all some 100. That'll last us a long time, right? And it was under $10. So if, or I think it was somewhere around in that neighborhood, even if you know somebody that can split it with you, seriously, how, how inexpensive is that, right? That reminds us of the olden days. Y'all have been sharing with me things reminding y'all of the olden days and y'all start naming prices. And I remember those days too. Gracious, where have they gone? They are long gone, aren't they? Oh yeah, I've still got enough butter to get plenty on here. On oh, my eight inch parchment pieces. But yeah, if you have nine inch pans, don't let that stop you either. Just get you some nine inch parchment pieces and you use those nine inch pans as well. Like I say, I just like how eight inches. That looks awesome. See, I've got some flour here and there. That's all I'm gonna do. One of y'all sent me this little beater and it's actually got a spatula on it. And I love that because it helps to scrape down the bowl. I didn't even have to do it. I mean, isn't that awesome? Isn't that a beautiful color of cake batter? I think so as well. I want to taste this so badly. I know they tell us these days, don't taste stuff with raw egg in it. And we did our whole entire childhood, didn't we? And we know these eggs are super fresh because they came out of the coop. Yes, they did. Just this morning, they've never even been put in the refrigerator. <laughs> Let's see. You talk about light. It literally was like a cloud. An orange flavored cloud I was putting in my mouth. Oh, that was good. Okay. Get out of there. All right, y'all. Now, I do try to do evenly for three layers. I love all your old time cakes because they're three layers and they've always got nice glazes and jams and jellies and such in the middle. It, it's like when people really took out the time to make a beautiful cake, right? Okay, so I'm gonna start with a cup in each and then I'll go from there. Can y'all hear my cows? Our cows, John drove up out there and I saw him taking off in the Jeep to go feed them. So they're like, daddy's coming to feed us. They get excited about it. All right, we're gonna start with our second cup. If I don't do this, I get one that's really deep. And then I get one that looks like a little pancake. Y'all know what I mean? One last cup. It's gonna be about two cups in each pan. Like perfectly. I love that. I love that. Sorry, I take a little while longer, y'all, but I cannot stand. Do y'all ever watch videos or shows and they just dump it and they leave so much? I go, I can't stand that either. So I take that little bit more time and I get all the goody. Yes, I do. Y'all, this cake in that series 
even gets stolen one time during a church event while they're all at service. Someone is in the back fellowship hall and steals the cake, so it becomes a great mystery. And Esther is very distraught. <laughs> She's funny. She's a very funny character. Let's see. I need two. That's what I was looking for, my little um, offset spatula to get this in here evenly. It's almost it's so fluffy and light, but that cake flour reminds me of a sponge cake, which is an old-time cake, right? So, I like that. So, I like that. My oven, again, talk about variations. Esther cake cooked it one time. In the cookbook at 350 and then when she was in another book called Esther's gift at 325 Fahrenheit so one I'm gonna just take a little longer but it's gonna bake it a little more tenderly isn't it yes so I like that 325 that is what we're doing now it's gonna go in there pound it a little bit let out any little air bubbles. It looks good. 325, anywhere from 25 to 30 minutes till a toothpick in the middle comes out clean or mostly clean because you know what I say. If it's a little bit crumbly, that's even better. Um, and I'll see y'all then. Okay, y'all, I'm taking this orange that we had zested. And I'm needing to juice him. I need a cup of fresh juice. And y'all, I have about 1 million antique juicers <laughs> up in my kitchen. And I'm down here squeezing an orange. That is sad. A sad state of affairs, isn't it? If this one orange doesn't do it, of course, squeeze until you get a full cup. Hey guys, I did have to get me another orange squeezed. I sure did. And to that, we are going to add one quarter cup of granulated sugar. And I'm going to get that stirring around just to get that sugar melted in there. Um, we've already got our orange marmalade made from another video that we did together, homemade. If you don't have homemade, Esther used jarred marmalade bought from the store. That was her little secret, so y'all don't tell, okay? But anyway, we made fresh this time just to see how much better we would like it. And so now the only thing we have left to do is whip some cream. We can put this cake together. Yum. Mm, these smell so good. I'm going to put these cakes out here. If you look, you can see the little hole where I tested one with a toothpick. <laughs> I'm going to let them cool just a few minutes, and then we'll move on. Okay, y'all, while the cakes are still nice and warm, we're going to spoon this orange syrup mixture over each one of them while they're still in the pan, too. That's Esther's instructions, per her instructions. Soaking them right in, just like that, guys. Okay, now that I've gotten all of this syrup in this cakes, now we're gonna let the cakes cool completely. I'm getting our bowl, our mixing bowl. You see it's frosty, I've had it in the refrigerator getting nice and chilled for our frosting, which is whipped, heavy whipped cream or Chantilly cream because we're flavoring it. I need one cup of cold, cold, heavy whipping cream. And I get the heavy. It's got more fat in it, and so it's even better. Ooh, Amy, you do better to measure that in a dry ingredient measure but it's close enough isn't it <laughs> it still looks like one cup to me i just didn't want to get fussed at right right let me put this back in the refrigerator keep it cold all right excuse me y'all i'm gonna start whipping this cream 
and I'm going to add four tablespoons of, I'm using powdered sugar. Now, Esther uses granulated sugar, which is fine, and it'll whip just fine, but I like, this is our frosting, so it needs to stay, it needs to stay whipped and nice, and I found that powdered sugar, it has cornstarch in it, so it kind of stabilizes your whipped cream a little bit, so that's why I do that. But you can use the granulated sugar like Esther if you want to. It's four tablespoons and I'm going to add a little bit at a time. And you do want to watch this. You don't want to walk away because you want it to have soft peaks, okay? And if you over whip heavy whipping cream, it becomes butter, okay? So you'll have you a big thing of butter. It's not the worst thing in the world. But do you see that soft peak sticking up right there? It stays up. Yeah. But it's soft. It's not hard. And I'm going to scrape it down one time, get all of that powdered sugar down in there. And I'm going to begin mixing it again. And we're going to add eight ounces or one cup of sour cream. Can y'all see how wonderfully well balanced this is slowly i'm going to incorporate this little bits at a time Now I'm going to whip it and let it get well together incorporated and nice and fluffy. how well our peaks are holding. Still pretty good. I think that's it. I went and got a special cake plate, one that I would imagine Esther would use as well with the tall dome on it. Don't y'all think? I got this one at Dillard's at the mall. It's pretty, isn't it? I think so too. But anyway, any cake plate will do. Last time I did it in a plastic carrying because I was sharing it with Bridget. Okay, our cakes are cooled. Let's see here. I like to kind of run an edge around just to make sure it's going to come out. Y'all know I always cheat and I put mine in the freezer too cool, so he's nice and cold. I don't want to slam this cake down on this nice cake plate. There we go. There we go. And then our parchment paper. Be sure and peel your parchment paper off. Yes, please. Please do. Such a nice, light, beautiful color in it. Okay, this is where our orange marmalade comes into play. All we need is 12 ounces, and this one's a little bigger than that. So, um, I'm just going to put some. But you're going to do about a third of your 12-ounce jar. On the first layer and take it you can take it all the way to the edge or just about to that edge just like that yummy right are y'all putting all these flavors together in your head there we go <laughs> oh it left the parchment paper in here that will work as well Mine was a little too cold because I put them in the freezer to get nice and cold, so it was just wanting to kind of freeze to the pan was all it was. The most important thing in the kitchen when you are making anything is patience. Yes, it is. 
I heard that from Martha Stewart years ago and I thought, she is so right. Because as long as you take your time and you have patience, you'll get that little cake out of there. Okay, we didn't have to peel the parchment paper. I just want to show y'all because it's on here. And I'm saving that because it's got some cake on it. Oh yeah, that's gonna be my little snack. Just got like one little layer of cake, like the crust layer or something. I don't know what it is, but it's good. Okay, y'all. Just like this. And now we'll put our third layer. Let's see if it might want to come out of here. <laughs> Little guys, did y'all get cold in that freezer? So we did. These are the most moist little cakes. There we go, and the parchment paper stayed, but we got all our little cake out. This is what I'm talking about. It's just got this little bitty crust-like layer. Mmm. Mm. Immediately, I tasted orange. Immediately. Now, I'm going to turn it, this one back upright. I did my others upside down, and I like to do my last one upright because sometimes it's got a little bit of a mound on it. Y'all saw us banging these on the counter. These are pretty well flat cakes. Sorry, I keep washing my hands. These are some moist little cakes, though, so that's a good thing. So anyway, if it's got any little bit of a hump in it or a... Uh, Peel, if you will, then now it's on the top and it won't matter, right? So pretty. It would taste good just like this, wouldn't it? I know. Okay, we're going to put some more orange marmalade. This time, I'm not going to take it all the way out to the edges. We're going to keep it right in the middle. And we're going to leave a border. Um, Esther says to leave an inch and a quarter. And I like it... Maybe a little less than that because I really pile, we're going to pile that whipped cream frosting on top. So, so far, so good. Kind of go along like that because you're going to leave that orange marmalade showing right in the center so people can see what they are about to bite into, what they are about to enjoy. To me, this frosting is a little bit runny. That's my only complaint. I might would do more whipped cream and less sour cream. Um, but this is Esther's recipe, right? And by George, everybody wants it. Nobody complains. So, so I'm going to do what Esther says to do. Next time I make it, I might just call it mine, and then I'll I'll change it up just a bit, just so it'll be a little, little, it's spreadable, all right, but I want it to be a little less spreadable. <laughs> Does that make sense? It's beautiful, isn't it? I agree. It always makes a gorgeous cake. Now, Esther is like, I'm like Esther, or she's like me. I like to let this cake rest for at least four hours to overnight in the refrigerator, chill. So I'm coaxing it with my spatula, my offset spatula. I'm just going around and coaxing it. Just saying, hey, don't you want to stay up here on the side of the cake? Now, come on. Don't you come on. So, I'm just coaxing it a little like that. And it seems to be working. <laughs> there we go. There we go. Then I'll try to make my, my middle marmalade piece pretty. This is all what you want to do, okay? 
My mom always said I played with my food. My daddy did too, more than I ate on it. Well, here I am. <laughs> here I am a playing. Let's see. I want you back some. Push you back. Oh yeah. Just like that. Thank you so much. Back there, you look much prettier like that anyway. Yes, you do. Just like that. There we go. Are y'all ready to cut into this beautiful masterpiece we have done together? Yeah, I saw once we pulled that frosting back up, then it stayed. I don't know. It's crazy, isn't it? Maybe that cold cake made it stick to it. Stick to its ribs, huh? You want me to come over there and cut for y'all? Here I am. Let's see here. I'm going to cut John a piece. Do y'all see? How beautiful. Beautiful, fluffy, spongy cake with the layers of orange marmalade and that wonderful frosting. Y'all know it's going to taste good, don't you? I know. Let's see. Clean my knife off. And let's do it again. This will be John's piece. It's a little bigger. <laughs> Beautiful. All right, y'all, what we've been waiting for is taste. I'm gonna get some of that frosting and some of our orange marmalade. And this, this cake is tender, tender, tender. <laughs> oh yes. Y'all go make this orange marmalade cake. It is wonderful. Yes, it is. I'll see y'all really soon. Mm, 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 mm. I gotta get this to John. <laughs> see y'all later.